I'm going to be talking to Emil Dmanchev, who is an MIT uh, research affiliate and a PhD candidate at the Norwegian University of Science and Technology. And we're going to talk about the uh, value of uh, hydro, uh, uh, hydropower from Quebec being exported uh, to uh, the New England states, but also two-way fl uh, power flowing from New England into Quebec. So welcome to the interview, Emil. Hi, Mark, and thanks for having me again. It's a pleasure to be here. Now, just a little bit of scene setting here. Uh, last week, I was uh, on a panel at the U.S. Energy Association where they had four heads of independent system operators in U.S. in the U.S. Like one of them was uh, California, for instance, Casio. And the question came up, what are the costs of renewables in the U.S.? And generally, it's about uh, $10 a megawatt hour uh, for wind and about under $20 a megawatt hour uh, for solar. Now, just for comparison, for especially for Canadian audiences, BC Hydro's legacy hydro dams, these are dams that have been paid off decades ago, cost $26 a megawatt hour, and their new dam they're building, Site C, is $150 a megawatt hour. So that's kind of the price of renewables compared to, to hydro. And the work that you did, as I understand it, is not just hydro exporting, sorry, Quebec exporting hydro to New England, but the benefits of two-way trade between hydro uh, and, uh, and renewables. Is that correct? That's right, yeah. So what are the, what are the benefits of using uh, Quebec Hydro's big dams as basically a battery for New England's wind and solar? Mm -hmm. Right, so the uh, benefits are uh, that uh, hydropower reservoirs, such as the ones found in Quebec, but also other places around the world, uh, British Columbia has similar hydropower resources, although not as significant as those in Quebec, um, they can provide very valuable balancing services for wind and solar as we move toward um, levels of uh, deep decarbonization. Um, we know based on uh, research by uh, many scientists that, uh, including our own research, that low carbon power systems are, uh, will be relying on a backbone of intermittent renewables. But the question is, how do we um, balance those renewables? And in our research, we find that hydropower reservoirs could be one of the solutions to do that. So in the specific case of Quebec and New England, what, uh, what what were your research findings there? So we um, uh, did uh, this research at MIT um, uh, Center of Energy and Environmental Policy Research. Uh, myself and two co-authors at MIT uh, looked at uh, what it would take for the Northeastern US and Quebec power systems to reach levels of um, deep decarbonization where emissions are reduced by anywhere between 80 to 100%. Um, and we used a, a model of, of the power system that could calculate the uh, optimal investment decisions and optimal operational decisions about um, what kinds of power plants should be built and how they should be run in order to meet electricity demand reliably and at the lowest cost. And so this kind of modeling, which is a very uh, traditional in our field, um, helps us determine um, what um, uh, a uh, you know, low cost vision of the future might be to, to meet our climate goals. And we specifically look at the role of Quebec Hydro is what we do in our research uh, in this context. Okay, so let me let me uh, paint the picture for our, our viewers here, Emil. Uh, so, under this scenario, uh, New England could build out uh, significant quantities of onshore wind, offshore wind, uh, solar, all of uh, intermittent uh, generation sources, and by building new transmission between with Quebec, where they have all these hydro dams, when the wind's blowing, when the sun is shining, and all that really ultra cheap electricity is being put into the grid, then BC, or sorry, Quebec Hydro uh, shuts down or reduces the amount of water that goes through its dams, builds up the, the reservoir, 
and and imports that cheap uh, renewable energy from New England. And then when the sun goes down, the wind stops blowing, then it opens up the dams, produces electricity and exports more to New England. Have I got that correct? Yes, uh, that's, a, that's a good way to describe it. And you know, I, I would add that one of the special things about these kinds of hydropower reservoirs is uh, their uh, one flexibility. So ability to produce and change the amount of energy they produce very, very quickly or relatively quickly um, on the one hand. Uh, and on the other, the large uh, size of their storage capacity. Um, so that allows them to store water behind the dams for many months, which uh, effectively provides seasonal energy storage, which is a key challenge in low carbon power systems. So uh, under your scenario, under your, in, in your modeling, I'm going to assume that what you uh, arrived at was a cost effective, you know, like electricity costs didn't climb up, uh, climb unreasonably. Uh, and so New England could build out all of that uh, wind and solar at a reasonable cost. And at the same time, Quebec, uh, which has surplus capacity and the ability to build more dams if there was enough demand, it benefits economically uh, as well. Mm -hmm. Right, so uh, in, in, in general, what do, we, what do we see in our low carbon scenarios is um, a lot of wind and solar, which are the cheapest sources of, of energy and um, uh, that'll especially be the case uh, as their costs continue to decline out to 2050, which was the year of our modeling. Um, so, you know, to go back to what you said in the beginning, um, there are sort of two things that um, power systems will need in the future, or I mean, two things they need today and they'll continue to need is one is uh, kilowatt hours. So that's energy. Uh, and the other is kilowatts. Uh, so uh, the cheapest source of kilowatt hours or energy will be wind and solar um, or you know potentially other intermittent resources, um, maybe things that we cannot predict today as well, but you know, wind and solar are pretty obvious. Um, but you know, what you need in addition is kilowatts, uh, which is just another way of saying we need some firm resource that can provide uh, power when we need it. Uh, so that could be energy storage, that could be um, a thermal plants, gas plants with carbon capture and storage, uh, for example. Uh, and um, you know, we see that if we model the a New England power system in the future, um, we see that um, generally a low lowest cost decarbonization includes some amount of gas with carbon capture and storage. Uh, but when we allow New England to increase its transmission to Quebec, we actually see that that's preferable and that it would be even lower, lower cost for New England to, instead of building carbon capture and storage, um, to build maybe a little bit of carbon capture and storage, but to rely much more on uh, trading with Quebec and with the hydropower reservoirs in Quebec to balance uh, the wind and solar intermittency. So let's talk about what the benefits are here for Quebec, Neil. I, I understand New England's going to benefit. They get low cost power. They get uh, they can build out their wind and solar at, at very low cost. They can decarbonize, you know, their their power grid. That's all wonderful. What's in it for Quebec? So that's a great question, um, and we do find that uh, this kind of um, you know, two-way trading of electricity between Quebec and New England, that, that, that's in the interest of both regions. Uh, so one way we know this is that when we do our modeling, you know, we are agnostic as to which region um, benefits out of this. We just let this mathematical representation of New England and Quebec decide what's optimal for the region as a whole. And so um, when we see, when, when in our results, we see that Quebec hydropower should be used as a battery. That's in the interest of the whole region. Um, so to make it a little bit more specific, um, what uh, Quebec would get out of an arrangement like this where electricity is traded back and forth between New England and, and itself is that it would simply be able to sell the electricity produced by its dams at a higher price. Um, so if it, if it could 
hold off on producing during hours when wind and solar are abundant, well, those are hours when electricity prices are likely to be low. So effectively, it's, it's holding its energy during those hours and not selling for a low price. Uh, but then that stored energy, uh, Quebec could sell later uh, at a time when wind and solar is, is low, and those will be periods when electricity prices will be very high. And so it, um, Quebec uh, producers will simply make uh, higher revenues uh, from, from the water that they have. Right, and there's precedent for this. I mean, uh, BC Hydro and the BC government brag about this all the time. Their their uh, subsidiary Power X uh, buys, you know, cheap uh, California solar, as uh, Minister Bruce Ralston says, uh, when prices are really low. In fact, they're practically giving it away, and and so they cut back on the amount of hydropower that BC Hydro uh, produces. And then when in the evening, uh, when the sun goes down. And, and California needs uh, electricity, then they open those dams up and they sell it to them at, at higher prices. And it, it kind of subsidizes the, the Crown Corporation, uh, actually, in a way. It's a very profitable way to do it. And I would imagine Quebec is already doing some of this with uh, New England, and now it just wants to do a lot more. Mm -hmm. Right, yeah, those kinds of arrangements are not um, necessarily new, but they're something that we could scale we could take further advantage of is these market forces uh, that we can leverage to um, decarbonize most cost effectively. We see the same thing in Europe where uh, Denmark and Norway uh, trade electricity in a very similar fashion. Denmark is one of the countries with the highest um, shares of non-hydro renewables. They have a lot of wind. Uh, and Norway, of course, has hydropower reservoirs similar to those in Quebec. And um, what Norway will do is purchase electricity from Denmark when, when it's cheap, when the wind is blowing, um, and they will save the water uh, for when it's really needed. So um, I think uh, you know maybe that gives us some hope that these kinds of solutions are in fact quite feasible because uh, we already see them see, uh, see see the proof of work essentially in the real world. Right, and and my take on this is is that the uh, the hydro uh, hydro utilities like BC Hydro and Quebec Hydro, they, they get it, but the governments are the policymakers are not thinking strategically, and voters haven't been sold on this model yet, and so the kind of research that you're doing makes the case for it, and uh, and makes the case for building transmission, and which of course is a problem. Uh, already in New England, uh, they recently uh, voted down having a big transmission line built from Quebec into uh, New Hampshire, through New Hampshire, I think it was. Anyway, thank you very much for this, Emil. Always appreciate your insights. Thank you, Markham. It was a pleasure to, to join you again.